Mr. Weiler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to propose Amendment G5, which is under the reference number of 12136497, and it reads as follows, that Bill S5 in Clause 4 be amended by adding after line 28 on page 3 the following, quote, healthy environment means an environment that is clean, healthy, and sustainable. Um, and... That's the amendment itself, and if I just may explain the, the rationale behind it. I mean, it begs the question what kind of uh, environment would be healthy if it wasn't also clean and sustainable. Uh, but this amendment is based on testimony that we've heard from multiple witnesses, not least of which is the world's foremost expert on this subject matter, who's uh, Dr. David Boyd, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment, who also happens to be a Canadian. Um, and so this would make this act consistent with how the right is described in the UN General Assembly uh, in a, a resolution that was passed just uh, less than half a year ago, which Canada supported. And so it would ensure that Canada essentially practices what it preaches internationally. And it's defined here in the definition section such that it wouldn't need to be amended in every time we mention right to a healthy environment throughout this act. Thank you. Would anyone, Ms. Collins? I just want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Wheeler for um, putting this amendment forward. I think it is incredibly important, and I enthusiastically support it. Mr. McLean. Well, thank you. Um, it is an interesting amendment, and I you know, thank uh, one of my colleagues for putting forward a definition, something called healthy environment. But a healthy environment is an environment that's healthy is you know, not really explicative of what we need to accomplish here, with all respect, and an environment that is clean, healthy, and sustainable, all of which are, uh, in my opinion, relative terms. And actually, I think we actually kind of need to come to what we mean by a clean environment, a healthy environment, and a sustainable environment. I mean, this is uh, it, more words on paper signifying no result at the end of the day. So... I think it doesn't add anything to what's already there as far as saying healthy environment. A healthy environment represents an environment that is healthy, clean and sustainable. Uh, again, interpretive definitions. So I, I think it's um, redundant, and I will be voting against. Anyone else? Mr. Kirk. Do I have the floor? I think I was recognized oh, first. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree uh, with um, my colleague's assertion that um, if we go back to the days of Maurice Strong in our common future defining um, what sustainability is, we know that that's a very complex term. And um, I, I think that when we have terms that are looking to improve on environmental sustainability, we can't have them um, in a tautology. Like, it, it's just it's tautological to have these terms intertwined without defining exactly how each one relates to, to each other and how they en enhance the environment. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Curry. I'd, I'd ask uh, if the officials have any, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about definitions, and I know there's been, been uh, some discussion related to definitions in, in, uh, in previous amendments. So, so certainly uh, uh, one of the, the substantive uh, changes that have been brought forward in this bill compared to previous iterations is the conversation around a, uh, a right to a healthy environment. So I'm wondering if, uh, um, if the officials have, have uh, comments on, on uh on this definition, whether it's restrictive, whether it is in fact too broad, whether it it has some some consequences in the the interpretation of how other clauses affect or related to the bill, I think that would be uh, be be helpful for the committee. Who would anyone like to take that? I can start, Miss. Uh, um, and if I'd, I'd make. Two points. Um, the, the main one is that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that that many countries did um, support the UN resolution, um, the, the, and many countries have, in fact, codified various 
formulations around um, a right to a clean or a healthy environment. There is no standard approach to or understanding of the content and scope of the right. And indeed, when Canada voted in favor of the resolution, Canada ex expressly said um, uh, that um, work is underway to remains underway to develop a common understanding of the right. Um, and and um, the, the second point I would make is that um, precisely because of the, the, the broad and general terminology being used, um, the, the amendments that we've introduced in S5 um, require, will require the ministers to develop an implementation framework and to develop that implementation framework through consultation with Canadians. And the bill will require that framework to, among other things, clearly explain to Canadians how the government um, interprets these concepts and how it will apply those interpretations in the various decisions that are made under SEPA. Uh, so um, uh, th that's why um, th the bill itself did not include a definition it and deferred the, the 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 approach to defining and unpacking the concepts to the implementation framework. Anyone else? Uh, okay, I saw Madame Posey, Madame Collins, and, and Mr. McLean. Oui, alors. Uh... Yes, I think what Mr. Moffat just said is very interesting. In two years, there will be regulations. People have discussed all of this because we know that it's not a true right in the law, but I find it interesting to provide that detail because it provides evidence that we need definitions in this act. There aren't enough. Yeah, just uh, to Mr. Moffat, um, you had said that some countries had supported it. I've, my understanding was that it was a unanimous, uh, um, unanimously approved um, motion around the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment that passed this year, um, and that you know 150 countries around the world are implementing legislation around the right to a healthy environment. Uh, I'm just curious. Any specific concerns, Mr. Moffat, you have about including the words clean and sustainable in this definition uh, when we heard from Dr. Boyd, uh, you know, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment, that this was critical language? Mr. Moffat? Our concern. Uh well, sorry, and for, first of all, uh, apologies. I shouldn't have used the word "some." I, uh, you're you're correct. the The resolution was um, was widely uh, adopted, uh, recognizing the the, um, the the strong support globally for the for the importance of of protecting um, of providing for uh, a clean and healthy environment, um, and indeed the the terminology. Um, that we've included in S5 reflects um, the emerging international uh, terms. The, the, the issue that we have um, at the moment is one of, of not knowing precisely how the implementation framework will define the concepts and not wanting to inadvertently uh, set limits on our approach or um, uh, require the approach to address issues that uh, might be inappropriate under SEPA. Um, so it's really a question of, of uh, really the, the approach is let's adopt the, the concept and then spend time discussing with Canadians exactly what it means and how it will be implemented under the Act. Mr. McClint, yes. Well, uh, is this a follow-up question? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. Just wondering if there would be language uh, to define this to include clean, healthy, and sustainable um, that would allay your concerns about limiting the definition. If it had said something along the lines of the healthy environment includes 
um, an environment that is clean, healthy, and sustainable, or includes, but it's not limited to. <laughs> I'm just curious uh, how including the words clean and sustainable uh, would cause problems in an implementation framework that I assume the government wants to include those concepts given um, the recommendations we heard from Dr. Boyd and given uh, the unanimous support from countries who take part in the United Nations. That's a question for Mr. Moffat. I, I, at this point, I think all I can say is that various countries have um, defined the concepts differently, have started with the same term of healthy environment or clean environment, and have then developed uh, further definitions that are not all the same. And um, given that there isn't a, a clear and uh, a consistent approach, um, uh, our the approach that's codified in the in the bill at the moment is is again start with this this general terminology and then unpack it uh, through a public process to develop an implementation framework. I I don't know if I can elaborate much more than that. I apologize. Okay, Mr. McLean. Follow up, Mr. McLean. Just as a last comment, um, yeah, I just I hope that we can support moving forward with this language. I, it doesn't seem to me that it would limit uh, the definition, but if if it does, then I hope that people who do have concerns with it, it would maybe amend it to uh, have language that would be open but still include these critical pieces. Mr. Mo uh, Mr. McLean, thank you. Um, the and I'm glad that we talked about the implementation framework because. What lacks in anything the United Nations puts forward is the implementation in jurisdictions that actually have the responsibility to do something of this nature. Um, so it is a bit of a paper tiger in that respect. But I do want to look at the conundrum here that we're talking about because we are putting something on paper here that is a definition to be looked at going forward. So I want to address clean. Most of us here would say clean would represent a lack of bacteria uh, and healthy might mean a lack of viruses, and sustainable would mean exactly the contrary because the environment isn't sustained without some viruses and some bacteria. Uh, matter of fact, it's, as you say, Mr. Chair, it's one of the phyla that uh, make up a large portion of the earth, and yet that's not considerably clean to have a bunch of bacteria floating around the environment. At least most people in interpreting this definition wouldn't think so. So there's, there's a conundrum I have is this whole classification of each of these three words that don't really jive together at all uh, when you actually analyze them and what people are going to interpret them to mean. Are we going to say, yes, this is clean, or yes, this is healthy, or yes, this is sustainable, because the three don't exist together? Uh, Ms. Taylor Roy. Um, yes, could we call the vote? To this. So I will be calling the vote. I call the vote, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Duguid. Je vote pour. Four. In favor. Ms. Taylor Roy. En favor. In favor. Thompson. In favor. Mr. Weiler. I'm in favor. Mr. Benzin. Against. Ms. Lewis. Uh, Ms. Vecchio. Nay. Mr. McLean. Opposed. Madame Posey. En favor. Ms. Collins. Enthusiastically in favor. Yes, pull seven set, nays count four cat. So G5 is carried. We now go to BQ2.